So thank you so much for joining in the Miracle Lessons, Daily Miracle Lessons class. It's great to see you here. I'm really happy that you joined and that you showed up to be here to undergo the miracle procedure. You know, it's, it's quite something. And I'm really happy that you did so. So today we're going to use chapter 31 again, just like last week. But now we continue with with a very specific uh, section and which is called choose once again and that's exactly where I'm going to start with so the lesson that we're going to do is lesson 182 in the in the, the Urtex manuscripts which is in the blue book lesson 183 and uh, the title of it is I call upon God's name and on my own and we come to that later. So I'm, I'm first I'm jumping right in into this uh, chapter 31 because especially the last part is so amazing and that's exactly where I want to start with. It is the very much like last part of the of the textbook. It is it is great to uh, to see this. I will I will start reading because this is really like an introduction. A cooling down, a relaxation, um, a comforting from the first degree, really like that. So I read the last three paragraphs, which is as an introduction to the to today's class, two eighty two. Hear me, my brothers, hear and join with me. God has ordained, I cannot call in vain. And in his certainty I rest content. For you will hear, and you will choose again. And in this choice is everyone made free. I thank you, Father, for these holy ones, who are my brothers, as they are your sons. So this has to do with you. This is you. My faith in them is yours. My faith in you is yours. Is yours. I am sure, I am assured that they will come to me as you are sure of what they are and will forever be. They will accept the gift I offer. They will accept the gift I offer them because you gave it me on their behalf. And as I but do your holy will, so will they choose and I give thanks for them. Salvation song will echo through the world with every choice they make. For we are one in purpose, and the end of hell is near. In joyous welcome is my hand outstretched to every brother who would join with me in reaching past temptation, and who looks with fixed determination toward the light that shines beyond in perfect constancy. Give me my own, for they belong to you. And can you fail in what is but your will? I give you thanks for what my brothers are. And as I, each one elects to join with me, the song of thanks from earth to heaven grows from tiny, scattered threads of melody to a one inclusive chorus from a world redeemed from hell and giving thanks to you. 
and now we say Amen. For Christ has come to dwell in the abode you set for him before time was, in calm eternity. The journey closes, ending at the place where it began. No trace of it remains. Not one illusion is accorded faith, and not one spot of darkness still remains to hide the face of Christ from any one. They will, thy will is done complete and perfectly, and all creation recognizes you and knows you as the only source it has. Clear in your likeness does the light shine forth from everything that lives and moves in you. For we have reached where all of us are one, and we are home where you would have us be. Hear me, my brothers, hear and join with me. God has ordained, I cannot call in vain. And in his certainty I rest content. For you will hear and you will choose again. So this is like a prayer. And that is very much like a prayer. A prayer of recognition of what is actually going on at the end of time. Where we always meet. Where we always come back to. Like where time doesn't have any meaning, where it doesn't, where time, does, place doesn't make any sense. So that is that is the place where we meet. And do you feel that right now? That's great. You don't feel that right now? Just hold on. Just just stay here. Stay right here. Because in the lesson you will see too. It's like it's all about grace you know this is all by grace and that means that it's not by your effort it is not by your might or power no it's by grace it's going to be given it is given to you and you and you receive you open to receive so here in this prayer uh, jesus is thanking you for you his brothers like we're equals. It is not like, okay, there's Jesus, there's Christ, and here are you. That's not the case. You know, it's like, no, it, it is your friend. It is, it is a friend who says this to you. There's no difference. The only difference you could perceive is an idea of time, that you still hang out in time and think you need to be there for a moment. That's okay. The ending is sure. And, and you're, we're getting near the end of it. We're getting near the end of time. And that's not a threat. That's, that's a joyous occasion. Not being stirred by time anymore. Not being stirred by place. And yeah, just being in a place of perfect calmness and, and continuity and rest and peace. That's really like, this. these are the last paragraphs from the textbook. So this is like the finale, the grand finale of the textbook. <laughs> and it's full of biblical references too. I will get to that another time. But it's, it's great to read it. So I'm going to start now with uh, paragraph 5, because there's a lot in there too. 5, 6 and 7. So it's on page 282. Uh, chapter 31 h5 learn then the happy habit of all of response to all temptation to perceive yourself as weak and miserable with these words i am as god created me his son can suffer nothing and i am his son thus is christ's strength invited to prevail replacing all weakness with the strength that comes from God and that can never fail and thus are miracles as natural 
as fear and agony appeared to be before the choice for holiness was made. For in that choice are false distinctions gone, illusory alternatives laid by, and nothing left to interfere with truth. I am as God created me, his son can suffer nothing, and I am his son. So this is like the, the sh shortcut to, to get you out of temptation. Like, I am as God created me, his son can suffer noth nothing, and I am his son. It has nothing to do with what I think I am, it has to do with what I really am. So that is what will always be there. It's not under my influence. I have nothing to say about it. Like my perfection is guaranteed by God. It is taken care of. So now the only thing for me then is to accept this, to entertain this idea, to accept it, to apply it, to use it. Like for all temptation. I'm as God created me. I cannot be anything else. Like I'm as God created me. God knows what he's doing. I don't. Like I as a individual human being whatever you want to call it i don't know what i'm doing absolutely not but god knows what he's doing he created me perfectly and i'm his son so his son can suffer nothing because he didn't he didn't create a suffering son seeing that as a concept is is great to consider it's like oh that's lovely that's a great idea and then the acceptance follows. The acceptance lies in the fact that there's no exceptions to it. That you say like, well, in this case, I don't know. I'm not really sure it works here well too. So you, you naturally look, look for, um, say, situations, events, where you can prove it, it didn't work. No, no, sorry, God, no, it did not work. Or something like that. Like this is really the part of self-forgiveness that you're, um, say, practicing in our spiritual path. Like forgive yourself for what you think about yourself. Because that is bringing you a lot of uh, drama and trouble. And as long as you value these ideas, you, you see this reflected. You're going to prove to yourself that that is so. So accepting the message i am as god created me means then that you don't entertain other ideas about yourself that you think are a possibility they're not there's no exception and and you start to accept that like i don't know how to do that i don't know how to accept it that i am as god created me I want to have that revealed to me. I want to see that that is true. This is what I can ask for. Show me or um, say, I really want to see that. I want to experience that, that I am as God created me. I have no idea what that means. I don't have no idea how that feels. But it, it is the truth about me and I want to know the truth. That's a real deep desire that I want to know who I am because otherwise I don't know anything if I don't even know myself what am I you know what what am how am I walking around so that's that's why the urgency to accept this is high the say the impossibility of it can be high too like you can feel like that I have no idea how to do that. It looks totally impossible for me to, to accept this because I don't really know what this is about. I don't know what that means. So this is basically your spiritual path. You start to accept that you are as God created you. Something you don't have to do anything for but letting go of your ideas about yourself and all the exceptions you can come up with. You know, all of them, not even one left behind. So that's, that's great, great practice. So you can start by just applying the idea. So in, the more you remember it, the more it becomes like, oh yeah, it's my certainty. Wait a minute, I pull out of this drawer my certainty. I am as God created me, his son can suffer nothing, and I am his son.
So you start to apply that and you see that it does something. It's one strange way it is comforting to you to express yourself like that during moments of agony, anxiety, or whatever you experience. Suddenly there's like, oh my God, I, that's great. Even a little release of the tension that you carry with you in, in trying to hold yourself together or trying to survive. Yeah, so this is really a lesson in itself, isn't it? It's like it's just a paragraph, but it's a lesson in itself. In the in the uh, workbook, I think it's like three times that this lesson comes comes uh, repeats itself. Like um, I am as God created me; His son can suffer nothing, and I am His son. So it's like no matter what, if you do the daily lessons, you you will encounter this like at least three times. But you can use it in every practice just like the idea of i'm not a body i'm free i'm still as god created me well i'm still as god created me there you have it already i am as god created me <laughs> so there's a lot of material to practice with that's not the problem um so the acceptance is really the process then see in the pro uh, yeah one more thing about that then the the practice of it is too that you think that cause and effect are apart. I, I come back to this all the time. It's like you think that there's a time that you say these words and that you are going to accept them. You think there's a time in between those two. Well, actually, it doesn't need to be that way. So we'll probably come back to that later. Let's Let me check this out. So now the last sentence makes a lot more sense. Uh, of this paragraph for in that choice are false distinctions gone illusory alternatives laid by and nothing left to interfere with truth see that starts to make a lot more sense now false distinctions illusory alternatives like no this does not have an alternative no, there's nothing but this. I'm as God created me, his son can suffer nothing, and I'm his son. Like it's watertight. You will not be able to to make a deal to to yeah, find exceptions. No, you don't <laughs> it's not possible. So H six. You are as God created you, and so is every living thing you look upon, regardless of the images you see. What you behold as sickness and as pain, as weakness and as suffering and loss, is but a temp temptation to perceive yourself defenseless and in hell. Yield not to this, and you will see all pain in every form, whatever it occurs, but disappear as mist before the sun. I'll repeat that once more. Yield not to this, say, misperception. And you will see that all pain in every form, wherever it occurs, but disappear as mists before the sun. A miracle has come to heal God's son and close the door upon his dreams of weakness, opening the way to his salvation and release. Choose once again what you would have him be remembering that every choice you make establishes your own identity as you will see it and believe it is so you are as god created you you are as god created you and so is every living thing you look upon regardless of the images you see what you behold as sickness and as pain, as weakness and as suffering and loss is but temptation to perceive yourself as you are not, where it comes down to. You perceive yourself as you are not. So this is really great. Seven. 
paragraph 7. Deny me not the little, little gift I ask, when in exchange I lay before you, your feet, the peace of God, and power to bring this peace to everyone who wanders in the world, uncertain, lonely, and in constant fear. For it is given you to join with him, and through the Christ in you unveil his eyes, and let him look upon the Christ in him. My brothers in salvation, do not fail to hear my voice and listen to my words. I ask for nothing but your own release. There is no place for hell within the world, within a world whose loveliness can yet be so intense and so inclusive. It is but a step from there to heaven. To your tired eyes I bring a vision of a different world, so new and clean and fresh, you will forget the pain and sorrow that you saw before. All right, so this is like the perfect description of a miracle, right? It's like seeing a new world, fresh, new, free from pain and suffering seeing it in a different way because of the realization of of the connection that you feel with source you know that makes everything different for just a blink you know that already would be so great so that is available for you in in this in doing this in in realizing this and seeing that that's an opportunity that that's a possibility for you and it becomes so intense and so lovely that you're like one step away from heaven. Like you wouldn't know what to do with yourself when you experience it. So much love for your brother. So much love for God. So much connection. So much fulfillment. It's like you forget every idea that you ever held about pain and fear and all that. Just because you say allow this to occur to you so do you want to experience that it's like well here that is here that is here it is it is available it is not that you have to do that much for it at all no it is recognizing it is a possibility and allowing that to occur to you and loving your brother it's like it's not passive at all you love your brother you're so open to him and to god so you're so open that you can actually allow that to occur like a very deep place inside yourself where you allow this to occur loveliness feeling the love for your brother in a recognition of your oneness with him like in your recognition of your oneness with all that all living things so that's that's the gift you know that's like that's the grace that we're talking about in the lesson you will see so i call upon god's name and upon my own it's like I'm not excluded from that at all. No, it's happening in me. Where else does it happen? Like who else is loving everything? It's me. I'm loving my neighbor as myself and God above all. You know, it's like completely, totally. So that's why it's so good to stand still and, and allow this to affect you and sink deeply into that feeling of Oh my God, the love of God. <laughs> I say, oh my God, the love of God. Ah, yes. So then it becomes obvious. Like here it says too, there's a mechanism. It's, it's being said here. The way that you recognize your brother is the way that you're going to see yourself. Allow yourself to love your brother with all of your heart. That is how you will see yourself as the most loving thing in the universe. You know, so that doesn't give you any space for other ideas about yourself in that moment. They, they, 
yeah they're useless they they're nothing like dust you sneeze one time it's gone it's more like that but your love is all the depth and all the intensity you can imagine in that you just disappear for a moment in a joining with your brother so this is what the miracle is so yeah open up and allow that to occur i love you thank you thank you so that's really beautiful so you have to relax in that that's why we always do that it's like relax no it's gonna be all right there's nothing that you have to do or cannot do or anything like that no you know how to love your brother you you know your love for god that's why i love to meet you for your love for god you love god with all of your heart absolutely and that's happening in you like the source i saw it the other day in a lesson like the source of love is in you you recognize it in yourself and extend it to your brother feeling that love for your brother recognizing that's also part of it it's like a short yeah yeah a short like suddenly there's like electricity going on <laughs> So are you willing to get electrified with the love of God? Uh, that's great. So we call upon God's name. So that's that's the lesson of today. Um, that we're going to do a key lesson. 183. Mm -hmm. I call upon uh, 182 then in the vortex. I'm going to read a couple of paragraphs of it and then stop in probably in between or so. We'll see what happens. I call upon God's name and on my own. God's name is holier, but not holier than yours. To call upon his name is but to call upon your own. A father gives his son his name and thus identifies the son with him. His brothers share his name and thus are they united in a bond to which they turn for their identity. Your father's name reminds you who you are. Even within a world which does not know, even though you have not remembered it, so we skip to the third paragraph. Repeat God's name and all the world responds by laying down illusions. Repeat God's name and all the world responds by laying down illusions. Every dream the world holds dear has suddenly gone by. And where it seemed to stand you find a star, a miracle of grace. The sick arise, healed of their sickly thoughts. The blind can see, the deaf can hear. The sorrowful cast off their mourning and tears of pain are dried as happy laughter becomes, comes to bless the world. Repeat the name of God and call upon yourself, this is five, whose name is his. Repeat his name and all the tiny nameless things of earth slip into right perspective. Those who call upon the name of God cannot mistake the nameless for the name, nor sin for grace, nor bodies for the Holy Son of God. And should you join a brother, you sit with him in silence and repeat God's name along with him within your quiet minds. You have established there an altar which reaches to God himself and to his son that's really lovely that's really great 
And should you join a brother as you sit with him in silence and repeat God's name along with him within your quiet minds, you have established there an altar which reaches to God himself and to his Son. Skip to seven. Thus do we give an invitation which can never be refused, and God will come and answer it himself. Think not he hears the little prayers of those who call on him with names of idols cherished by the world. They cannot reach him thus. He cannot hear requests that he be not himself, and that his son receive another name than his. Repeat his name and you acknowledge him as sole creator of reality. And you acknowledge also that his son is part of him, creating in his name. So I want to end up at 11, but first we're going to read 9 too. Today you can achieve a state in which, experience, which you will experience the gift of grace. You can escape all bondage of the world and give the world the same release you found. You can remember what the world forgot and offer it your own remembering. You can accept today the part you play in its salvation and your own as well. And both can be accomplished perfectly. Okay, so here's the last paragraph. All little things are silent. Little sounds are soundless now. The little things of earth have, have disappeared. The universe consists of nothing but the Son of God who calls upon his Father. And his Father's voice gives answer in his Father's holy name. In this eternal still relationship in which communication far transcends all words and yet exceeds in depth and height whatever words could possibly convey is peace eternal. In your Father, in our Father's name, we would experience this peace today, and in His name it shall be given us. So if you had to if you had to give a summary of this lesson, it would probably not so, be so easy to tell like, okay, well the name of God, something with the name of God or like that's why it's so great. These lessons, you read them, you do them, you repeat the, the lesson. Like, I call upon God's name I'm on my own. I don't even know what that is, but I'm just doing it. I don't need to understand what I'm doing. I'm just doing it. I'm sitting still, having these words in my quiet mind. Or I join, like literally, with a, my brother for a moment like oh yeah let's let's sit together we read this lesson together and we're gonna sit still and and see what happens you know it's like yeah this communication is what i what i would love to experience it, it is a natural thing so i want to experience that as a natural thing and then suddenly you become quiet and, and you sink into into that stillness together like wow so this is this is what i offer you now in this moment let's just be still for a moment and and call upon god's name even though we don't know what that is but we join our minds in that we have that intention it's like during this reading this you feel in yourself like yes 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 that is sufficient you know you're open to receive that that is sufficient for doing the lesson you now you going to be quiet to to feel this communication to feel the love for your brother and the love for god so we choose again to to step into that instead of distractions and and all that so let's just for a moment be quiet and and give that to one another
that's great thank you so it's all quieting down quiet minds quieting down relaxation allowing being open to receive feeling that love for your brother for God thank you God thank you thank you thank you brother thank you thank you thank you thank you for everything thank you so much you can just feel that inside yourself it doesn't need to look anything like it's like despite all appearances like this it's like no you this is happening in you it's not happening outside of you i'm not doing this to you or something it's like no you you receive that for yourself this isn't literally like an internal affair that's so great and it's as deep as you want it to be. I call upon God's name and on my own. So I'm included in this whole story. I'm complete and whole part of this. I'm not a body. I'm as God created me. His son can suffer nothing. And I am his son. Wh wherever that is to be found. Thank you, God. <sighs> All right.